This is a collaboration between the Irish Revolution Channel and Imperial Scribe. We both make history videos. Imperial Scribe makes some pretty amazing animated videos and you should definitely check him out. I'm currently making videos about the Easter Rising and its aftermath, but I'll soon start on the Irish War of Independence, so please subscribe to both of our channels. The year is 1916. On Easter Monday, April 24th, 2,000 rebels seized various buildings in Dublin city and declared the Irish Republic at the General Post Office. Britain, busy fighting the First World War, has been taken by surprise. In Dublin city, there was only a garrison of 400 soldiers. Many of the officers were away from the city as it was a bank holiday. Britain summoned artillery from Athlone to the west, troops from the Curra to the southwest, and Belfast to the north. Additionally, two infantry brigades were shipped over from England. Each brigade was made up of two battalions of Sherwood Foresters and most of the men were raw recruits sent to war after between 68 weeks of training. As their captain later noted, many of them hadn't even passed their musketry course. In fact, so poorly informed were they that many of the soldiers thought they had been to France and remarked at how well spoken the natives were. They were greeted very warmly by local Irish people and perhaps were somewhat confused about what the hell they were supposed to do. They were warned of snipers and rebels hidden in houses, prepared to ambush them. The British tactic was to cordon off the rebel positions and then overwhelm them with machine gun and artillery fire, but this plan went awry at Mount Street Bridge. The brigade was on its way to Trinity College when they ran into the outposts of the 3rd Battalion of the Rebel Irish Volunteers on Northumberland Road near the Grand Canal on Wednesday. When the rebels in number 25 Northumberland Road opened fire, at the beginning there were only two men firing, it was a duck shoot as the young Englishmen had no idea where the shots were even coming from and provided easy fodder for the rebels. Mick Malone, a 28 year old carpenter, waited until the advance guard had passed the house before opening fire from number 25. Clan William House and the other outposts then added to the withering fire. There were two rebels in number 25 Northumberland Road and four at St Stephen's Parochial Hall a little further to the north. In addition, there were two outposts overlooking Northumberland Road, Clan William House held by seven men and Roberts Builders Yard held by four. There were also some rebels stationed at the nearby Grand Canal Street Bridge, a railway embankment at the docks and on several large water tanks on the roof of the railway workshops. In the words of the historian Fergal McGarry, these outposts would form the most lethal killing zone in the city. Ten soldiers were hit in the first attack. The soldiers were trying to cross the canal, and even though there was an easy alternative nearby, their commanding officer General Lowe ordered the men to take the bridge at all costs. For the rest of the day, at 20 minute intervals, waves of troops led by officers with brandished swords charged up the road and were mown down by the skilled rebel marksmen. Perhaps most remarkably, a large crowd of Dublin civilians had gathered to watch the battle unfold from the other side of the bridge. This battle had now turned into something of a spectacle. Despite being vastly outnumbered, the rebels were in good spirits. Inside Clan William House, Patrick Doyle and Tom Walsh were heard shouting, Isn't this a great day for Ireland? And shortly after, Doyle was heard saying that he got shot in the head and was killed. And several hours into the battle, Brigadier McConchie suggested attempting a flanking manoeuvre, horrified by the huge cost of the assault. He was overruled by General Lowe, who insisted on maintaining the frontal assault at all costs. Eventually, the rebels were overpowered on Thursday, when the British brought up machine guns and explosives. Four volunteers were killed and another captured, the rest slipped away. The fighting cost 240 casualties for the British, or if you want to think about it another way, two thirds of the British casualties during Easter week. Perhaps the British were stuck in the mentality of the time. A similar obsession with frontal assaults would cost the lives of 20,000 men on the Battle of the Somme on the Western Front on the 1st of July alone. Eamon de Valera, commander of the 3rd Rebel Battalion in nearby Bolin's Mill, did not send any reinforcements during the day, despite this being by far the most successful rebel engagement against British forces since the 1798 rebellion. No more frontal assaults like this were attempted during the Easter Rising. The British cordoned off the areas around rebel garrisons and barraged them with machine gun fire and artillery. There would be no more battles like this in Dublin. Due to the nature of the fighting and the huge disparity in numbers, this event is sometimes called the Irish Thermopylae. 
This has been a collaborative effort between myself and the Irish Revolution channel. Anyone interested in Irish military history should check him out. He's extremely knowledgeable on this topic and was invaluable in researching, voicing, and advising for this video. Animations for this video were created by myself, Imperial Scribe. Please check the description below for links to our respective channels and let us know if you liked it so we know if we should do more collaborations like this in the future.